Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you all the things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Kicking things off, I'm sure you guys heard the news last night, and it's a big one, too, is that with everything that they've said about former President Trump this last week with the FBI raid, last night the FBI confirmed that they were looking for nuclear information pertaining to documents the FBI acquired at the raid of Mar-a-Lago property in Florida on Monday. The story broke for Washington Post, and whether they find those documents pertaining to nuclear documents is unclear. The documents as a whole, however, are under scrutiny whether they are classified or declassified information. Attorney General uh, Merrick Garland said Thursday that he could not discuss the investigation, but in an unusual public statement at the Justice Department, he announced that he had personally authorized the decision to seek court permission for the search warrant. So far, the only thing happening is Trump's decision to object to the search warrant, which he'll have until this afternoon. Trump also posted on social media Thursday late night that they should release everything pertaining to these documents and what's on them um, in a I have nothing to hide gambit. Moving on, one of the things is that suicide is a sensitive uh, topic to talk about in general, and this is on the uh, cusp of launching the new 988 number. So the suicide hotline used to be a 1-800 number, and then they switched it over to a streamlined 988 number. But one of the things is that um, police have come to people's homes after calling someone to talk to have crossed some lines. Recently, the National Suicide Hotline um, but social media posts have risen concerns about privacy and ongoing health of individuals who may have only needed someone to talk to and not needed the uh, people to come and, f and so anyways, one person featured on NPR was Liz Winston when she went in to get help for suicidal thoughts in New York City. She was detained for 24 hours and she said she uh, had no consultation. Preventing suicide isn't the same as treating uh, mental illness. Folks who were forced into psychiatric care are more likely to commit suicide than those who do voluntarily. Liz volunteered to go to the New York hospital with thoughts of suicide and was detained for those 24 hours. John Draper, the executive director of the um, suicide hotline, has said that the that dispatching police is a last resort. The hotline states, if you're thinking about suicide but not taking steps to act on it, 988 is unlikely to call law enforcement without your consent. Instead, 988 um, counselors can provide resources, referrals, and a kind ear. However, if you're at immediate risk and could act on a plan to kill yourself, police may be called and you may be taken to a hospital involuntarily. That is a major, uh, um, so yeah, that's, that, there's a lot to unpack right there for sure, but it's, it's interesting um, how intertwined, how like mental health and now uh, services are being um, in that as well. So a lot of times it's, it's interesting. There's, there, it's, yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot of back and forth and, the, back and, forth and there's, a, a, there's a tight rope to walk because some people just want someone to talk to, but it's, it's weird because you want to be able to call without any kind of judgment. And then if you call, they have a way to access you. So it, it's, it's interesting. So the major climate bill, and we're gonna move on right now. So the major climate action bill is set to pass this week as the Senate is divided as always, split the vote making the VP Kamala Harris to pass it through the Senate. So this is kind of like one of the stories that I was talking about earlier this week before a lot of this other stories started happening. And one of the provisions throughout this, which is called the Inflation Reduction Act, was to aimed at curving healthcare pricing minus the provision on insulin. So that was a, a kind of a big deal. They wanted to cap insulin at $35 a month, but unfortunately they, ha they weren't able to pass, get that passed. A couple uh, senators on the Democratic side were not uh, uh, asked to take that provision out so they can move forward with this uh, overall bill. So the overall goal was to reduce the deficit by $300 billion. This essentially was all those professions taken out of building back better. They tried again and got a lot of it through, even though the amount of money was way less than it was originally envisioned. $300 billion would invest in energy and climate reform, $60 billion for growing renewable energy infrastructure in manufacturing like solar panels and wind turbines, tax credits for individuals on things like electric vehicles and making homes more energy efficient. One big one is a historic measure that allows federal health security to negotiate the prices of certain expensive drugs each year for Medicare. The negotiation will take effect for 10 drugs covered by Medicare in 2026, increasing to 20 drugs in 2029. The bill put a cap uh, of $2,000 on 
out-of-pocket prescription drug costs for people on Medicare, effective 2025. Tax reform. This is also the legislature to create a 15% minimum tax for corporations making $1 billion or more in income, bringing more than $300 billion in revenue. Part of this was to add a 1% ex exercise, uh, excise tax on stock buybacks was introduced and it could bring a roughly five times as much revenue as it's carried interest to measure. It's not perfect, but it's something. Uh, MCAT covered candidates forum for uh, Montana District 1 through City Club Missoula. You can watch that at MCAT TV Missoula on YouTube. Uh, the City Club uh, sponsored this uh, thing between three candidates that are running for the, the, the district, Democrat, Libertarian, and a Republican. You can look that up and you can find out more information about that. Um, Another big story recently is, um, I'm just kind of going through a lot of this stuff, is that they might have a vaccine for Lyme disease. And it has been a major problem for those who like going outside and hiking and going through tall grass and trekking through trees. And now science is on its way to vaccinate people as young as five years of age. The vaccine, call, currently called VLA-15, is a major step forward in science to curve an ever-increasing number of ticks contributed by rising temperatures. Early Lyme, Lyme symptoms can include fever, headache, and cir a circular rash that can resemble a bull's eye, according to the CDC. Later symptoms can include joint pain, facial palsy, and inflammation of the brain and spinal cord. The disease can be treated with antibiotics, especially in early stages, but it's been known to develop persistent symptoms, such as pain, fatigue, and inability to focus. So tests are being made, and the soonest we can see these become available is 2025. So there's a lot of things happening in a couple of years from now without any kind of immediate things happening. So there's, but let's come back to Montana. And I think this is uh, something that uh, you probably heard about. Um, you know, you've been hearing a lot about the St. Elmo fire and everything like that. And as of like, um, I believe it was Wednesday when I double checked, it was about 61% contained. And this was a big, uh, this is kind of a, a pretty sad story because a couple moved to uh, the Pulse and Elmo area where the fire was happening to build their dream home from scratch. And they built this log cabin house, which they sunk $90,000 uh, before the 21,000 plus acre fire completely burned this couple's home. Uh, Lisa and Steve Hullett of Dayton, Montana said that they were about six weeks from moving into their dream home that Steve had built. So now they're paying for the house they will never be able to move into. And by that, it means that they got the loan out and the, and the insurance didn't kick in until they actually finished the home. So it's, it's there, there, it, there's a, such a weird gray loop area and NPR has a link to the GoFundMe. And so far as of the middle of this week, they have raised $45,000 of the $90,000 they sunk into this. If you get a chance to see this home before and after the fire, you'll be shocked. The only thing that survived was their $50,000 fireproof roof. Um, and then, like I said, according to the Santa Web, Elmo fire was 61% contained as of Wednesday. Uh, Missoula Current, uh, covered a story following the acquisition of private land for better access to trails and hiking. And so in conjunction with the Forest Service, presented a $600,000 grant with the Five Valley Land Services and working with Dean Stone land owners of the 580 land, uh, acre land transfer for Missoula Conservation Land Inventory. The Missoula Dean Stone Community Forest includes the House of Sky Trail, which runs across the mountains ridgeline and down to into the West Fork of Deep Creek. Um, the 4.6 mile route uh, provides sweeping views of the surrounding valley. The, the area also provides vital habitats to a range of species and a connectivity between ecosystems. And there's your news. There's a, a, uh, there's a lot going on for sure. And up next, we have a fun video for you guys featuring a lot of the kids uh, from our horror camp this week. And then I'll have a promo because we're going to be starting doing our Saturday drop-in starting in September 3rd. So when I come back, we're going to talk about some movies. Hello. My name is Grah of the Galactic Board of Human Tourism. Human society may seem hard to understand, but Earth is a beautiful planet with a rich culture. In this holo video, we'll be going over some do's and do nots in human tourism. Tip number one. If you find yourself piloting a human transportation vehicle, make sure to follow these simple steps. A green light means proceed as normal. A red light means cease forward momentum. And a yellow light means accelerate as fast as humanly possible. <laughs> Tip 2. Refrain from stealing food from a human's plate. They do not like to share. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
First, those human brains are organic and perfectly compatible with our flesh-based AI systems. Why is it dark? Where is my family? There's a couple bonus tips for you. Humans can use specially modified and cut fabrics as appearance modifier or modifiers. It may seem a, a bit strange at first, but don't panic if your friend looks different from the day before. A little tip, if they have the same face, it's probably the same uh, person. Now for a culinary tip. Cats are delicious. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See ya. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out this week. Hey, have you ever come up from a small town and just decided to climb the water tower? Well, you know, sometimes you can climb a radio tower. Why not climb an old structure and, you know, without any worries? So this is basically the movie about the consequences of uh, climbing something you probably shouldn't have climbed in the first place. And so we have these uh, two friends are just kind of hanging out. They decided like, hey, let's go climb that radio tower. They climb it and they get stuck. That's basically the movie. Uh, thick enough not to be able to uh, hug and slide down. I'm assuming one of the characters has to learn to use the radio tower to transmit an SOS, only to get ignored at the last minute. Watch what you climb, losers. Um, but I bet they make a prequel called Climb. Up next, we have Emily the crim Criminal. Remember the kind of uh, um, emo girl from The Office? Uh, no, Parks and Rec. Duh. Uh, well, she is in a movie about a girl on the run from the law. Emily the criminal has Aubrey Plaza and I assume evil college debt and trying to get uh, quick cash with deadly consequences. Enjoy an indie film that kind of just follows a young girl in the criminal underworld as portrayed as Hollywood for over the years. So they kind of just copy each other. It's just like, that guy's evil, that guy's evil, oh, that person's evil. And we just, just do that. Copy, paste, and just throw this girl in there. Boom. Done. You got a movie. All right. Speed round. Mac and Rita, imagine if you were transported into the body of your older self and you're surprised your part of your lifestyle hasn't killed you yet. But hey, Bloody Marys have ve veggie tables and Mimosas has vitamin C. Uh, so, you know, what day is it again? 
Up next, we got Girl Picture, a provocative look at a young girl becoming women in this film that looks like it's a lifetime original movie. Summary, more girls on the cusp of womanhood, but like middle school. The synopsis is weird, but this is basically a, a last summer romp before the trials and tribulations of middle school, which for girls is a nightmare. All right, so those are your pre-critic movies uh, that you can probably just skip all over all together and stuff like that. Um, up next, we got a dubbing stuff for you guys, which features the 1963 movie, The Yesterday Machine. I just gotta get away from the comment section. Don't worry, my dear. I will protect you, no matter how many weird sci-fi things happen. Oh, oh, weird sci-fi thing. Oh, where, oh, where are we? On? Well, it looks like this machine was a great success. Welcome to the past. Oh, you might be experiencing some nausea, but at least you don't have to come here without your clothes. But you might be experiencing some minor swamp butts, so if you need to wipe, we have a bathroom down the hallway. For the sake of this experiment, please tell me where you hail from, and when, if it's preferable. Oh yes, let me introduce you. This is Otto, and this is Fritz. I am Professor Hoppenmeister. You might have heard of me in your history books. I have created a machine that can take people from certain points in time. Uh, no, I don't think we've ever heard of you before. Oh, I invented time travel and history doesn't remember me? Okay, well, um, well, tell me about how the Nazi party is doing. Well, the word Nazi is synonymous with very bad and awful and terrible. Most people don't think that okay, the Nazis... Okay, okay, I've heard enough. The Nazis are, you know, are a complicated you bunch of You guys have killed millions of innocent civilians. Or, when it comes down to it, it is the betterment of mankind. We, you don't know of what I am trying to aim uh, for. Uh, 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 that's, uh, what, that's all? Is that how you're talking to me? I have a lot of non-white friends. I'm very... Inclusive. Oh wow, Otto and Fritz. They must be like your closest all best right, friends all right. and whatnot. Cleopatra coming at ya. Well, as you can see, I have a lot of variety of friends here, and they accept me for who I am. I am a man of science. Well, I'm gonna go talk to her and see what her story is. Fritz, keep an eye on her. And no, you, you, you should stay. You're one of the guys. Please. Just talk to me for a second. You'll understand my story. Come on, Fritz. You can get out of here. As you can see, I see no color. All white people look the same to me. Both of them are Fritz to me. Now tell me, what year do you hail from? Is it a good year? Or is it a bad year? Kind of like, you know, the year 2020. Don't be shy. I really want to know what's going on in the future, or particularly what year you hail from. Not to mention all my instruments. They're not quite precise. Well, as much as I hate talking to a Nazi scientist, I'll tell you what I know is that I come from the 1960s. Are Nazis not really liked? Because, you know, in the 2020s, everyone calls each other's Nazis. I thought that was a term of endearment. Please go on about... What is the 60s all about with the Nazis? War ended, U.S. won against, well, the Allied forces won against the Nazis, and the Nazis were basically coined as a negative term, and anyone being called a Nazi would be one of the biggest insults. You know, I don't want to give too much away, but it's an inevitable end of the Nazi party at the end of World War II which, you know, is the continuation of the Great War. How dare you talk about my party that way? Germany will reign supreme. We will have German toast, German pizza, German uh, Asian food. You know how it goes. It's, it's exactly like that. Well, I'd hate to be the bearer of bad news, Mein Kampf. Oof. But you guys lost. Get over it. You guys stink. And now kiss my butt, and it's all swampy, so you can kiss it. I knew I should have teleported you without clothes. I knew when I made that and I saw that Nazi flag was, was like, how am I going to swing this one? Ugh. Hopefully I stick the landing, but that's not really up to me. Moving on, let's talk about some uh, city council stuff. Uh, we're back at the regular city council meeting and judging by the length, they, uh, have, they haven't really finalized the uh, fiscal year 2023 budget. August, usually at the end of this month, they talk about finalizing the budget for the next year. Uh, you know, they, they're cutting a lot of uh, funding uh, for sure because they have uh, been relying on a lot of those uh, ARPA 
and uh, CARES Act funding from the pandemic to help launch a lot of these programs that are in place. So we'll talk a little bit about some of the programs during this meeting as well, but we're gonna jump right in. And um, one of the big things is that during public comment, they brought up the old federal building. And this is uh, uh, David Everham, and he was concerned about the cost of redeveloping the site. Um, and this is what he had to say. The acquisition of the federal building, 200 East Broadway is a major realty deal. How can we as a city go through with this deal without full disclosure of all aspects of the building? How can we plan to pay for utilities without knowing how much it will cost? This is not poor planning, this is no planning. I've written a letter building to building manager Dan Hill, Governmental Services Administration, notarized by clerk of court office, Missoula County Courthouse. Mailed July 27th, 2022, certified mailed at the post office. Uh, here's a copy of it. He received it the 29th. Haven't heard back from him since. <clears throat> in the federal building, there's little air conditioning. It's just very hot in there. To not have full disclosure is like me buying a house for $600,000 and having the realtor say, we can't tell you how much the taxes are until you buy the house. I've been asking for this information for eight months from the county, from uh, GSA and the city. Nobody has it. It is unethical, illegal, and sets up the owner for a lawsuit. How much will it cost? We, the taxpayers of Missoula, to operate this. How much will it cost? We, the taxpayers of Missoula, to operate this building and renovate it. Nobody knows. No planning, especially for the carbon footprint. There's no parking, very little air conditioning, and it'll be a nightmare to work on. All right. So one of the big things and the big takeaway from this is uh, uh, I have been talking a little bit more about this uh, acquisition of this federal building. And part of this is that the federal government is uh, has a amount of stock in terms of how many buildings that they have. And, you know, it is a post office and it is federally owned. So the building is owned by that. And so acquisition by local governments can be uh, as simple as uh, like a dollar. So it's in a way, it's basically like giving away a whole entire building with its whole entire property. And uh, for mo many of you who may or may or may not know, is that the city actually rents the uh, site where City Hall currently lies. And so it is kind of a mixed use kind of site between um, district judges and also uh, the police department and uh, many of the offices of the city. Um, the county also has some offices in town as well. So they did a, a cost of a survey to look into like how much they're currently spending and uh, they want to either build a whole new building, which would have cost anywhere between 25 to 35 million dollars it's 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 a rough estimate um and just to kind of answer that guy's question um you know there's there's been a lot of talk going back and forth on this one as well but in terms of just being able to acquire this property and um at the same time like the person who would acquire the post office property it is uh, in the historic register um, of historic buildings. So anyone who were to uh, get this land and property, the building would have to remain as is, and so they would have to have some um, kind of investment put into it. So the city was looking into possibly investing and redeveloping in this site so they can basically use the bones and work through the city. And this is gonna be a 50-50 split between the city and the county. So they're gonna do a 50-50, um, uh, and then they're gonna split between the offices and work through this as well. So the whole idea is that they're trying to figure out uh, how cost effective this, uh, this would be. One of the m latest things that they had to drop is that uh, the police could not move into this building just because of the, uh, what he, uh, the public comment uh, brought up is like the parking situation and access. I mean, it's, it's, they don't really have too many uh, entry and out points in this particular building because it was built a long time ago without certain emergency exit kind of code. So it's something that the, it's going to be uh, an interesting process as they look into this. But um, for the for the long term, it seems like the city or, or anything, it might not be developed within the next uh, about 10 years. So there's a long timeline behind this and the, the information is coming in fluid and everything. So that was for the first public comment. The next public comment is a little bit lighter and it's uh, it's a couple of the kids from a city council member, Heidi West, talking about uh, their efforts in the fair. So this is uh, her two kids. Uh, we would like to invite you to the 4-H and FFA auction, which is this Saturday, um, August 13th at the fairgrounds. 8 a.m. Yeah, 8 a.m. Um, so I'm selling a uh, laying pen of chickens, which is just three chickens. And the type of chickens I'm selling are blue laced red wine dots. 
Um, I'm selling a dapple boar goat named Apple. Um, and if you don't want it, well, if you just want to support kids, you can also donate to um, uh, after the auction if you don't want to buy a full animal. Um, <laughs> or if you can't make it to the auction, you can get a proxy bidder to bid for you. Okay, so one of the things that uh, the takeaway from like 4-H and a lot of these um, animal sales and the kind of things that they do for this, it helps encourage um, foster entrepreneurship in kids, but also the money goes to scholarships and future education for them to use as well. So it's uh, going to be interesting. Um, just 4-H uh, is a very important uh, in retrospect. I wish I did it because nowadays, you know, there's not a lot of options for kids to actually who, who don't actually live on a farm to be part of 4-H. So they, uh, they uh, eased up on some of the restrictions, basically being like, you can go to a farm or a ranch uh, every like twice, three times a week, depending upon your schedule, and just look after an animal. And then when you bring it out to the um, animal shows and 4-H um, uh, kind of deals happening during the fair, you can uh, potentially sell your uh, bovine, pork, whatever, um, and get some money for your uh, kid's education. So there's a lot of money uh, with this as well. And if you have a kid, this is a good opportunity for a lot of them as well. So the today, the city voted on a series of bills to be paid, to, uh, a finalizing of the agreement between the Bridge Court Apartment, no, Bridge Street Apartments Agreement with Blue Line, which holds some form of uh, Americans with disabilities um, to keep a, it as a low cost for residents. So the whole point of this is that 30% of their gross income goes to their rent. So they have a very, they want to keep a deed restricted on this property, but the city didn't want to uh, basically keep on investing in this potentially money pit. And so they worked on a deal with Blue Line to have a redevelopment while also keeping the residents in place. And so Kevin Hunt during public comment was not happy about the city getting to the land um, uh, private land business, and this is what he had to say about that. I don't think that I don't think that's the appropriate way to to handle it. I don't, I don't think that the city should be uh, owner and and landlord, and and I don't think that there should be any more um, questionable inside deals with Blue Line Development, which has the inside track on so many things. I think it's wonderful, and you may recall Mr. Colino and I both appeared on NBC Montana urging that the city acquire the bridge apartments and. And uh, I, I commend I commend the city for doing that uh, as far as, you know, taking care of the people who are most in need in the community. But I think this manner of dealing with it on a long term basis is inappropriate. Thank you very much. OK. And so that was uh, Kevin Hunt talking a little bit more about that. Sandra uh, Vasica uh, responds and, uh, and she also weighed in on these uh, bridge apartments and how the city is uh, acting when the. Bridge Apartments uh, first came up to City Council. I I disagreed with it. I voted against it. But now the City Council, uh, or I guess now the city does own that. And if we do not have somebody to, I guess, be the um, the keeper of the Bridge Apartments, I guess, if we don't have anybody to provide those management services in the way that the city wants, then it will uh, it'll cost the city even more money. So since I disagree with it in the past, uh, just because I'm agreeing with it now doesn't mean that I agree with this project altogether, but I'm just hoping to um, find the fiscal um, to, to keep your safeguard your taxpayer dollars as much as I can at this moment in time. So that's why I'm um, okay with this. Yeah, and part of this uh, agreement is to keep these people in their homes while also uh, opening the door for potential redevelopment as long as it doesn't disrupt their current living situation. So the city wanted out of the Bridge Street Apartments in, in a way, they try to find, uh, they courted six different uh, property managements. Most of them said, no, I mean, unless we kick everyone out and redevelop the site, you know, we're not gonna touch this. So the, the deal with Blue Line was kind of a, um, uh, a deal out of necessity. So the city voted in favor of this and all their 15 items on the agenda. There was just a lot of pay, pays billable and just keeping the lights on in Missoula. Up next, we, uh, the city moved forward with a cannabis-centric business license during this time, and the city wanted to update the language and tie up some loose ends. So here's Jordan Hess talking a little bit more about that. Um, when, we, when we undertook the zoning action, um, there was a lot of talk about how the voters of Missoula County overwhelmingly approved um, the legalization of adult use cannabis. Um, and so our regulations should have a relatively light touch. Um, I think that's what we did. Um, and I think there's an opportunity to review those uh, as part of the code reform process. Um, but right now, um, this sort of um, ties up the, the pending work with um, uh, by creating a business license type um, and um, uh, 
it's a it's a relatively light touch again. So I think um, the intent was that that um, hopefully reflected the will of the voters that that these um, establishments are welcome. All right. So um, yeah, I mean it's uh, it's a continuation and just basically having its own category for cannabis businesses and permitting. You know, think about it just in terms of like how you know taverns in the state of Montana were passed and how the uh, the state was just like okay, they don't have a liquor license, but there has to be some regulations on taverns and tap rooms to be like okay, you can't go past like 9 or 10 p.m. depending upon you know different uh, permits and stuff like that and so part of this was also to mitigate some of the energy consumption uh, required in a growing operation so you know all the power that is required to keeping uh, basically a warehouse at around 70 degrees year round so you're basically having a, um, a glorified greenhouse that takes up a lot more power than most other factories in the United States. So let's move on. Throughout the course of the pandemic, money uh, came to Missoula through various emergency COVID relief packages that benefited the expansion programs in Missoula that benefited various programs, tackling housing security and creating the mobile crisis unit that relieves people, uh, that relieves police and gets folks the help that they need and also additional checkups, follow-ups. Um, just uh, Jordan Hess from the city pleaded to voters that this and many programs are up to them in this upcoming election and it's gonna be countywide. So it's gonna be a county election. We're asking the voters if they value these programs. Um, and um, and these programs came about um, largely as a function of um, some of the challenges that were exacerbated during the pandemic um, and were funded with, um, with pandemic relief money. Um, as many people have said, we've come to see how critical these programs are to our community, and I and I um, I hope that we're able to sustain them. Um, I do want to say that I think um, the executive budget, um, as a function of the mayor um, and um, the um, chief administrative officer and the department heads, um, is an exercise in creative thinking. Um, it is an exercise that is many months in the um, in development, um, and I sometimes. Um, bristle that the idea that we're not that the idea that we need to think creatively is is a euphemism for um, for cutting something, um, and I mean we hear we hear pet projects as a as a term that's thrown around and to me police and parks and streets and the nuts and bolts of government are not pet projects. Um, I believe that the city of Missoula operates efficiently, that it operates um, effectively, and that it operates on a lean margin. Um, and I believe that we are. Um, working in a dysfunctional revenue environment in the state of Montana, and that's why we're in this position. All right. So, yeah, I mean, that's the thing about grants is that, you know, you, you, you use these grants to start these uh, pet projects and all these different things, and then when the money um, isn't there for the next cycle, you either have to determine um, you're going to either cut it or you're going to have to uh, re reevaluate and redistribute uh, funding throughout the general fund. And, you know, one of the big things that I've been talking about as well is that the roads district in Missoula alone are down $2 million less than it was the last couple of years. So it's, uh, it's going to be a rough patch. And Gwen Jones, city council, talks about Mont Montana's budgeting across communities and how the state level needs to improve. If we had other tools to use to fund these necessary programs, we'd be using them. Um, I think we're a chronically underfunded city, as cities are across Montana. As Mr. Hess referenced, we have a very dysfunctional, broken taxation system that needs attention. And we're going to have a very difficult budget session um, in the next couple of weeks as we do our budget. And my understanding is the great majority of other cities across Montana are in the same situation as us at the same time as there is a huge surplus at the state level. So I'm hoping there are more discussions regarding how to approach our revenue in Missoula and in cities across Montana, because I would love to have more revenue. Um, my impression of our city is that a huge amount of work and effort goes in to stretch our budget to provide the level of services that are expected in this community. And it's very difficult and challenging and stressful, frankly, but the city makes it work because these are the resources we have. All right, there you go. And that basically wraps up my city council. Uh, money is getting tighter around here. And, um, you know, the city has done as much as they can with as little as they have. Um, they've done a lot with all of the money they've been able to get in here. Um, and then one of the scrutiny they had against the state and even Governor Greg Jean Forte is that there they was um, still a lot of money that was withheld um, from the CARES and ARPA funding um, just from the state level. Community meetings were uh, appointments. 
um, and budgeting for public works, nothing really to get uh, the blood pumping during the community meeting. So if you're interested in hazardous vegetation, I suggest you check out Budget and Finance Committee. But other than that, you guys can find out more information going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful website um, dedicated to, you know, kind of showing what's happening in Missoula um, um, and also um, Engage Missoula is a wonderful website where you actually look on current and ongoing uh, projects and also upcoming projects that the city is doing. You go to ci.missoula.mt.us. What I always go to is I go to meetings, which is right here, a little calendar. Click on it, let it load. Internet's acting kind of slow. Actually, it's the computer that's running slow, just so you know. Uh, so bear with me. And you scroll on down, you see all this information, everything like that. I always like to do calendar view. You can do list view if you want to, but I like calendar because you can actually look at the dates and the links uh, associated with it. I always click on a link. I usually go for city council and these meetings down here, but there are so many meetings that I usually just kind of gloss over. Um, just um, I, a lot of times I, I don't even get everything. I just get the, the uh, the fun stuff, essentially, <laughs> if you can count anything from the city, the fun stuff. Um, you know, budget, you click on the link, you always go to the agenda HTML, which is the actual website, and it'll bring you to a nice page. Um, and then up on the top right hand corner, a video will load, and you'll be able to watch the meeting. And also, it's fun because you actually have these links on the left side that actually goes right to that topic. So if you have a topic you're interested in, you can actually click on any of those links on the side. Fiscal year, executive budget 2023, boom, and it'll jump right over to the time code, which right here, if you, which you can't read it because it's so small, probably on your TV and it's small on my little screen, it jumps right over to the 19 minutes and 50 seconds into the meeting. Um, usually I don't have too much time in my show, I usually run to the very end of the hour, so I'm going to throw it over to a art clip for you guys. This is actually a last chance to see uh, Brian McGuire's um, In the Light of Consciousness. Um, it's, uh, it's, a very, uh, it's a very important piece uh, that they had at the Missouri Museum and they'll be wrapping it up. I'm, I'm assuming you won't be able to see it because they'll probably be starting tearing things down um, starting on Monday. So without further ado, here's an art clip and when I come back we're going to talk about some events because it is the parade is, I mean not the parade, <laughs> I hyped that up for nothing, but no it's the Missoula Fair. So the Western Montana State Fair is happening right now. So I'll talk all about that right after this.
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening this weekend. Besides the fair, we got some things kicking out. Uh, uh, Missoula Food Bank, they're doing a breakfast and they have also a lunch at 11.30. This is for Kids Eat Free, part of the summer uh, series of Kids Eat Free from the Missoula Food Bank. They also have uh, food here at the Missoula Public Library in the Art Box at 11.30. And it's a great opportunity for kids to get it free nutritious meals and they are as long as they're 18 and under they're good to go but also the food bank does not discriminate based on economic income and you can get some deals to get some cheap nutritious food from the Missoula Food Bank. Libraries Tiny Tales and Storytime are at 10 30 a.m. happening on the second floor in the Imaginarium and also the Art Box. Family Fun Time is going to be featured at the Mizumo Gymnastics. This is a one-hour open gym time for kids walking to 12 years of age. You and your child will get to explore the facility in supervised atmosphere. If you're interested in parkour, um, this is a good uh, stepping stone for a lot of kids to get into as well. So, a Western De Montana State Fair. Hey, free admission every day, all weekend long. Fair operates from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. August 10th through the 13th. 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. on the 14th. Parking, uh, public parking opens at 7.30 a.m. Enjoy live performances, area events, fair food, and more. And just so you know, they always have a bunch of those animal 4-H kind of events really early in the morning with the animals. So they usually start as early as 8 in the morning. And in terms of the fair operation, that's usually with the vendors and the rides and all that stuff. And it's that's the uh, around 11 a.m. for most days. So. Um, if you're interested in doing the floating service, they're going to do it for the rest of the summer. This is the UM River Shuttle Dash service. So the U Dash is the bus that travels all across the campus and allows for uh, students to get a, to their classes on time. But during the summer, there's not too many classes. There are some summer sessions, but the U Dash is utilized to basically travel people up the river so they can float on down. And this happens from noon to 6 p.m., where the last ride is at 6 p.m., and they do it Thursday through Sundays. I've talked about this many times, and it's a great opportunity for people who want floating, but they just don't want to have the business of having two cars. So, uh, Lego Club and the Lolo, oh, Lego Club is also happening at the Missoula Public Library at 2 in the afternoon. Hey, if your kids like Lego and playing with them, 2 o'clock upstairs on the second floor. Lolo Farmer's Market, Lolo Community Center is doing their Farmer's Market. I've driven past it a couple times. It looks like it's pretty fun. You guys can check that out as well. And that's um, most Fridays at 2 p.m. Um, Imagination Brewing Company is doing a beer release party. It's called the uh, Farm Party American Strong Pale Ale, and they're going to have some live music with the Strange Time String Band from 6 to 8 p.m. Beth Lowe, Dave Horgan, and Ed Stalling at Ten Spoon Winery. They're going to do some jazz and wine at the Ten Spoon Winery at 6 p.m. Worldwide Cinema, here featuring the uh, films as Playground from Belgium. The, the everyday reality of grade school is seen from the child's eye view in an obstacle course of degradation and abuse. Ooh. Following a seven-year-old Nora and her big brother Ab Abel, uh, we see Nora struggling to fit in before finding her place on the schoolyard. One day she notices Abel being bullied by other kids, and though she rushes to protect him by warning their father, Abel forces her to remain silent while the, he endures more humiliation and harassment by his peers. So it's interesting. Uh, you guys can check that out. It's going to be at the Cooper Room, uh, Room A, and I believe they have some uh, doors will open from 8, 6.15 to 6.45 at the, the film, and you can get access to the library through the parking garage in which the door will be open and the elevator will only go to the fourth floor and you will get access to the rest of the building. So it's just for the movie, and they are offering this at the Missoula Public Library. Um, happening today is the Missoula Stampede PRCA Rodeo Parade of Champions. Uh, Missoula Fairgrounds at 6 p.m. The gates open 7 p.m. Grand entry. They're going to have a 9 p.m. barn dance after everything. A different performance every night. Each night at the Missoula Stampede is a new experience. Come the first night and come back every night after see what's new. And there's just a lot of different things happening there. It's a parade of champions, a virtual uh, parade of champions live stock from the Western Montana State Fair. Um, the Parade of Champions was a Missoula Stampede tradition from the 1940s. Friday's performance is dedicated to celebrating the Western Montana youth agriculture programs and creating awareness of 4-H and Future Farmers of America livestock sale to be held Saturday morning. Lonesome Arc String Band at Lone Longstaff House at 7 p.m. It's going to be some bluegrass music. Sacred Alley is ho hosting a sound journey for the soul. So if you're into meditation, that is the place to be. Performance Art Camps. So this is PAC. So this is a big deal because this is all the summer camps, all those MCT major teenagers going to those sleepy boy camps. They're coming back to MCT due to performances this weekend 
and starting tonight at 7.30 p.m. Performance Arts Camp is talented teens that audition from the United States and beyond. After two weeks honing their skills in voice, dance, and acting on the shores of Flathead Lake, the campers present a weekend of live musical performance on the stage at MCT Center for Performing Arts. So it's a big deal. Um, and yeah, Zootown Arts is also doing Retail Song Cycle. It's going to be a staged reading by Cameron Michael Faring. So Mac, an idealist, a young man from a small town with a strong work ethic who believes that people are generally good. At the show's start, Mac starts a new job at the Fortune 500 retail store and he soon finds it more than he bargained for. So check that out. It's going to be at the Zach tonight. Um, it's Joan Zen Band, one of my favorite band, local bands in Missoula, but, uh, behind Locksaw Cartel and Voodoo Horseshoe. Fun jam band, going to be at the Union Club. And if you're interested in doing some things on Saturday, the market is going well until October. So the fourth uh, so the, uh, the Saturday markets and such is happening from about 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. People's Markets is roughly 9 a.m. to about 1 p.m. And they're all located in downtown Missoula. One's by the carousel next to the river. One's uh, almost center of downtown next to uh, the courthouse. And then the, f the main one, the OG market, is by the Red X's. Um, if you're interested in doing Bike to the Barns Tour, Orchard Homes, Hard Range, and Big Flat Neighborhoods are hosting a fourth annual Bike to Barns Tour. Take your bike adventure in your time between the 13th and October 2nd. New routes and locations, 13 local farms and food stops. Explore local farms and flavors in the self-guided tour. Bike through uh, Missoula's Orchard Homes, Target Range, and big flat neighborhoods. Uh, there's a lot of cool um, intricacy areas around here. Uh, be aware that the road is kind of thin around 3rd Street as you're going down uh, further and further. So just uh, be a little safe um, and um, just take your precautions when you're riding your bike. So your event registration fee covers events expenses as well as supporting CFAC's program, supporting local farmers, farmland conservation, and local food access to all Montanans. Backpacking with kids. At Kids Lake, Great Burn Conservation Alliance, Saturday, if you're interested in doing a backpacking uh, overnight kind of deal, um, join GBCA board member Elise Watts and her kids on an overnight at Kids Lake this summer. Um, Elise set off with her son and daughter, six-year-old twins, for a 3.5 week navigation, navigating the wide uh, swept ridge of the top Great Burn proposed wilderness. They covered nearly 80 miles, but did 16 lengths, had numerous wildlife encounters, and made lasting memories. No small feat for an adult, but truly incredible for a family and small children. Uh, to check out more, you can find out more information uh, by going to greatburn.org for more information and tickets. Soccer day at Missoula. Hey, you're, you, you, you don't want to necessarily sign your kid up for YMCA camps and have a major commitment. This is the place to be, Fort Missoula Regional Park, Soccer Day. Soccer Alliance of Missoula invites you to Soccer Day in Missoula, Fort Missoula Regional Park on August 13th. Join a full day of pa uh, pickup soccer for players of all ages, skill level, in a safe and supportive environment. Music, food trucks, grid soccer clinics, bear plush, a live performance by Andrew Harshell um, starting at 5 p.m. Join Soccer Day, Missoula, August 13th, starting at 10 a.m. Uh, visit MissoulaSoccer.com for more information. University of Montana cam uh, Campus History Tour starting at 11 a.m. So there's a lot of things happening on Saturday for sure. Philip uh, Meckling, a retired Missoula uh, Historic Preservation Officer, will discuss uh, the history of the University of Montana campus. And so they're going to be meeting at the university, um, probably at the Oval. Um, uh, you should double check this at MissoulaEvents.net. So again, it's going to be at 11 a.m. starting at the University of Montana. Nice historic tour. There's going to be probably a lot of uh, interesting uh, areas to look into, not to mention some old pictures of what the university looked like before and now. Um, essential grant skills for artists, Digital Arts Community Center is look, hey, if you're an artist and you're dismayed by not being able to uh, pay the bills, um, a grant application process, process is an important part for artists to uh, basically get, get commissions through grants, and they'll be unlocking the fundamentals of grant researching, planning, and writing for crafting stand-up proposals that actually get artistic projects funded. Uh, whether you, you're a first-time or immediate-level uh, applicant, this workshop covers everything you need to overcome your fear of grants, improve your skills, and secure the support of your work deserves. So, um, Another beer fest is happening at Karis Park starting at 3 and it goes into about 9 a.m. This is a Baron Brewing 35th anniversary celebration. It's going to be uh, featuring special guest Reverend Slanky. So if you don't know what Reverend Slanky is, it's probably one of the uh, biggest bands that I had when I was in college. So it's interesting to kind of see them um, forming up again. So I'm at Definitely want to check that out on a Saturday. Stop by the booth and take a walk back in time with photos where it all began and artwork from Monty Dolak Fine Arts. They also have a merch booth stocked with the one-time limited run of the 35th anniversary logoed wear t-shirts, hats, and all that other stuff. So 
Performance Art Camps, continuation of MCD performances, Saturday night. They're having a performance at 5.30, and they're having another one at 7.30. So they're doing basically a lot of performances this weekend. So that's what's happening there. You're going to probably see a lot of people downtown because you're going to have a lot of uh, families of these kids who are come across the nation so they can see a lot of their kids' performances. So be aware that they're going to see a bunch of annoying teenagers in the downtown market area on Saturday. So just be <laughs> aware of that. <laughs> Quiet kids! Um, moving on, Travis Yost live at the Ten Spoon Winery on Saturday night starting at 6 p.m. Black Crow, uh, the, Black Crow, the Black Crows is going to be at the Kittles Amphitheater at 6.30 on Saturday. I'm sure they're sold out. Uh, live music with uh, Dan Dubake. Um, I always mispronounce that name, so bear with me. This can be at the Cranky Sam Public House. A Missoula Stampede PRC Rodeo Night of Legends is going to be at the Missoula Par play, uh, Fairgrounds. So there's, like I said, like they said in their description, there's going to be a different night every sing single night at the rodeo. And then on Sunday, they're going to have uh, uh, other things as well. But let's let's finish, let's wrap up Saturday and we'll move on to Sunday. Um, at the Old Post, they're going to be have some bluegrass music featuring the Gravy Ladies. NMCDC Outdoor Cinema. They're going to be uh, in, Ch in Canto. Will be playing for the first time in and basically an outdoor theater. Um, it was directly straight to Disney streaming, and this is a chance to actually see it outdoors in the big screen and everything like that. Last time I went to a movie, I wanted to yell at a couple of kids. Were like, "Shut up!" Uh, so I, I am enjoying my uh, getting older. Um, so, anyways. Uh, <laughs> That pretty much wraps up your uh, Saturday on Sunday. If you're interested in going to the McClay Flat Nature Trail, McClay Flat once a month th from April through September, they'll host a bird watching event at a local hotspot. Their goal is to have a good time exploring the wildlife at an easy to access sites, all of which are in the Missoula Valley Extra Points. If you walk, bike, or take a bus to get there, um, and it's going to be at McClay Flat starting at 8 a.m., and it's going to be a two hour tour. Um, Lord of Dirt and FMX. This is the one that is the um, motocross, dirt bike, loud motorcycles and all that stuff racing to the Western Montana Fair. Amateur heats are at 1 p.m. and they're open to the public for free. Final races begin at 6 p.m. Gates open at 5 p.m. Montana's own Keith Sayers presents freestyle motocross to keep you on the edge of your seat between races. City Band. I'm the city man. We'll kick off this event, and I will get in free because I, ha ha ha, take that suckers because I know how to play the trombone. And um, I'm gonna miss out on this one, which is a pretty big deal because it's Symphony in the Park. Um, if you're like Symphony, it's completely and utterly free, and it's gonna be at Karis Park. So there's a lot of things happening downtown Missoula, and for more than 17 years, Missoula Symphony Orchestra has presented a free concert at the end of their season, at the end of the summer and they're going to be uh, presenting music for the soul, bringing a lawn chair and blankets for the summer uh, events filled with sound of Ariel Franklin, John Williams, Stephen Sondheim, and much, much more. So that's completely under the free Karis Park, downtown Missoula. Just go downtown Missoula, and if you hear a band, you'll know where to go. All right, so without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. It looks like you're going to have a lot to do this weekend. And for me, I'm Scott Raff, and for Wake Up Missoula, Take care, guys.